Welcome to this video. Today we're going to be looking at fluid and electrolyte balance. Now this is an area which has application in many different uh, types of clinical practice and many different clinical situations. So what we're going to do is start off by looking at fluids and fluid balance and then go on and look at electrolytes and electrolyte balance and, and why this is important. So let's start off by looking at uh, fluids, body fluids. Now about 50 to 60 percent of the body weight is actually water. And uh, in an average man, say a 70 kilogram man, this would equal about 42 litres of water in the adult body, about 42 litres. Now, body fluids are compartmentalised. They're in compartments. And basically, there are two compartments that body fluids are found in. There is the intracellular compartment. Now, this is not a single compartment. It's actually made up of all the cells of the body, all the billions of cells of the body, all contain fluid. So the intracellular compartment refers to the fluid which is contained inside the cells. It's intracellular, inside the cells. And in an average adult, as we said, with 42 litres of water, that would be about 28 litres of that water would be contained actually inside the cells. It's intracellular. Now the second fluid compartment is the extracellular compartment and that is that describes any fluid present in the body which is not in the cells which is not intracellular it is extracellular and the extracellular compartment is divided into two other compartments it's divided into the vascular compartment that is the fluid in the blood that is the fluid in the blood vessels so the extracellular fluid compartment is divided into the vascular compartment which is the fluid in the blood. Now the other extracellular compartment is the, uh, the tissue fluid, the, the, the interstitial spaces, the, the, the fluid in the tissues. So let's summarize, there's fluid in the blood, there's fluid in the tissues. They are both extracellular. There's fluid in the cells that is intracellular. So there's extracellular and intracellular. But really, the way I tend to look at this is that there's actually three fluid compartments. The vascular compartment, the tissue compartment, and the cellular compartment. And I'll just tell you a couple of interesting things before we re review this on the notes. One is that females contain slightly less water than males in terms of a percentage of their body weight. Can you think why females have less fluid as a percentage of their body weight than males? Well, the answer is that females have relatively more adipose tissue than men, and adipose tissue is associated with lower amounts of water. People that are obese also have a lower percentage of their body weight as water because more of the body is taken up with fat. Let's just review those fluid compartments now. These figures are assuming we're talking about an adult. Of course, small people and children will have significantly less, children way, way less fluid than this. So we're assuming that this is a, approximately a 70 kilogram man. We've said there's a total of about 42 litres here. 42 litres of fluid. And if we make that assumption, then approximately 3.5 litres of fluid will be in the blood. Of course, the blood volume is more than that. The blood volume will be more like 5 litres. But of course, quite a lot of blood volume uh, is taken up by the cells. The fluid in the tissues, the inter interstitial fluid, about 10.5 litres. And the intracellular fluid, a high figure, 28 litres. Now one of the applications of this knowledge is that the body has a reserve of fluid. The body has fluid reserves that aren't in the blood. It has fluid reserves in these uh, tissue compartments. Now the body needs reserves of fluid because if you think about the blood volume, it's actually reasonably small. 
And blood volume is essential to maintain blood pressure and the perfusions of the tissues. You might remember from other videos that blood pressure equals cardiac output times peripheral resistance. But only if there is adequate venous return. So there must be enough fluid in the circulatory system to maintain blood volume, therefore to maintain blood pressure. So let's just think about a situation. You're walking along, maybe going for a jog or cycling. It's a hot day. What happens? Well, of course, you start to sweat. You can sweat a lot. And you can lose a litre of sweat, two litres, three litres of sweat over a few hours if you're doing vigorous exercise in hot conditions. So suppose you've lost two litres of sweat. Now, the sweat is produced in the sweat glands in the skin from the plasma, from the blood circulation that goes to the sweat gland. Therefore, one, two or three litres of fluid, which has been exuded in sweating, has actually been lost from the blood. Now, if all that was not replaced, that means you'd only have about two litres of blood fluid left, in which case you, you would die, that you wouldn't be here anymore. So this fluid has to be replaced. So what happens? Well, when you sweat, a lot of fluid is lost from the blood. Now, what that means is because fluid is lost from the blood, it means that what is left in the blood is more concentrated. So the blood is more concentrated. In other words, the osmotic pressure of the blood increases. And we've dealt with osmosis in detail on another video. So water is lost via the sweat. Therefore, water is lost from the blood. Therefore, the blood becomes more osmotic. Now, because the blood is more osmotic, this means that fluid, water, from the tissue spaces, from the tissue fluid compartment, will be sucked into the blood by osmosis. Because the osmotic pressure of the blood has increased, the osmotic pressure of the tissue fluid initially would remain the same. Therefore, water from the tissue fluid is sucked in to restore the intravascular volume, to restore the volume of the blood. So even though in the short term several litres of fluid might be lost, the actual volume of the blood will remain the same. Now think about the situation with the tissue fluid. Water has been lost from the tissue fluid into the blood. That means that the solutes that are left in the tissue fluid make that tissue fluid more osmotic because water has been lost into the blood. So we now have a situation where the tissue fluid is more osmotic than the intracellular compartments. Therefore, fluid is sucked from the cells to start to restore the volume of the tissue fluid. So what this means is that when we don't drink for a while or we lose a lot of water, that blood pressure and blood volume can be maintained because we have this reserve of fluid that can replenish intravascular volume can replenish intravascular volume after fluid has been lost, replenishing the fluid in the blood from the tissue and from the um, intracellular spaces. Sweat is produced from the plasma. Fluid is therefore, water is therefore lost from the blood. That means the blood becomes more osmotic. Therefore, more fluid is sucked in from the tissue fluid, from the interstitial space, restoring blood volume, therefore maintaining blood pressure. This means that osmotic pressure of the tissue fluid is increased because it's lost water into the blood. Therefore, fluid is osmotically sucked out of the cells to replenish the volume of the tissue fluid. So we can survive for some period of time losing water without a loss of our ability to function because blood volume is maintained. Let's look at a further application of this uh, knowledge of compartmentalization of the body fluids and that is hemorrhage. Now, when blood is lost, the blood pressure drops. And that means that the pressure of the blood in the capillaries will also drop. Now, recall that in the normal situation,